I am not an expert. And if I were to stand here tonight and tell you I was an expert, instantly you should think two things. One, that I'm a liar, and two, that I'm slightly delusional. And anyone that tells you they're an expert, you should automatically think those two things. Because the minute that you think you are in control and know it all, you either stop trying or your life has become pretty boring. One thing that I am is the king of failures. And the result of those multiple failures to get it right has allowed me this awesome opportunity to speak to these 68 students going to be inducted with this honor tonight. And as I started to think about this speech, and I drafted about eight speeches trying to figure out what in the world am I possibly going to say, I realized I'm just going to speak the truth like I always do, and people are going to love it or hate it. And as I was preparing for this speech, a couple things have happened the last couple of weeks. I was presented uh, by a random occurrence at the Bendorf Y as my two-year-old daughter was taking swim lessons, and these two boys walked by me, and I didn't recognize either one of them. And they both stopped and turned around, and I'm going, okay, this is going to be interesting. And the boy recognized me and said, are you Mr. Maurer? I said, yes. And the last time that I had seen this, this guy, he was in sixth grade, about yay big, had a voice like this. And we started talking, and I found out that he had dropped out of school. And he realized it was a mistake, got himself back into school, was planning to go back to college and become a middle school social studies teacher, and I hope it works out for him. A couple days later, I received a letter from another student. And in that letter, this particular student addressed the idea that during middle school, I said or did some things that helped them get through a dark period of their life, which was a great honor as well. And then to have this opportunity by a former student to ask me to come up here and speak tonight. As a teacher, I can tell you there's nothing more gratifying as an educator than when a student leaves your grasp of your classroom or your building and they move on to bigger and better, in this case, high school. And one, they actually remember your name, but two, they have stories to connect you with. And I am, don't want to sound like the typical cliche speaker that always says they're honored to be here, but I truly am. I really feel like Augustus Waters when he states, I'm on a roller coaster only, only going up because I've been jacked for these 10, 12 minutes for a very long time. <laughs> But as I go through all these stories, it, it got me thinking. We all take these different paths and these different journeys in life. And one of the things that, that spawned in my head was that life happens. We have different paths. And regardless of the decisions we make or the decisions we have not made, it has led these 68 students here tonight to be honored for the four traits that they've demonstrated in leadership, service, scholarship, and character. And that's a pretty awesome recognition. For some, this has been easy. And for others, it's been difficult. Some of you might be here because you know you need it on your resume to get into college and maybe for a job. Others of you are here because maybe it's more than that. Some of you might be here because your parents made you apply and, and get in. And some of you are here for a bigger cause. Regardless of the path, they're here and they deserve the honor and recognition that they deserve. But the question that I have is, so what? You have good grades. And those that are here tonight that have already been in the National Honor Society have the same thing. So what? You have good behavior. So what? You have good character. You've shown leadership skills. So what? I mean, who really cares in the greater context of the world? If you were to pull the lens back away from your own particular life, and maybe even from Bettendorf, to the global capacity of six and a half billion people, who really cares what you do? Now, I'm not suggesting that these traits are not important because they're incredibly important, but if we take a step back and change our perspective and change our lens and how we have our outlook of the world, we start to realize that maybe there's something else that we can do. And so the first thing that I think that you need to think about as you embrace this recognition is that you must remain allergic to average. It's easy to be average. There's so many people that go through life trying to blend into the crowd, just fit in with everybody else, and not be noticed because it's easy to do. It takes time and it takes work to be good and it takes even more than that to be great. And I don't think that anyone here tonight is average because if you were, you wouldn't be here. But you need to avoid it because I also think that we're towing a very dangerous line. And for those that know me, I'm very upfront and honest and so this, I hope I don't offend you, but the, we're on a dangerous line here between good and great. And if I can be honest, I hate good, and hate is a strong word, but the reason that I hate good is because good is the enemy of greatness, because what happens when you say you're good, that's a good student, oh, you have good grades, oh, you have good behavior because you're not being a butthead. All those things keep you from being great because it's not enough. I mean, what really is good? You're not really doing anything whatsoever making an impact. And so the challenge that I have for you is not to toe that line because we want you to be great and as a matter of fact, we need you all to be great. 
Average attracts average, and greatness attracts greatness. And are you planting the seeds to create a social positive change in this society? I mean, really are you? I really want you to take a second to ask yourself that question. Are you really striving to be great? And how are you doing that? And how come the world doesn't know? Or are you hiding behind some secret genius thinking that it's just going to appear someday? But maybe I should ask you a different question. And maybe the question should be is, why are you not great? And if you are great, then how come we don't know about it? One way you can do this is you can Google yourself. Maybe you've probably already done that. I've done it many times. Maybe it's egotistical. Your name is your platform. Your name is your business. Your name is your brand. It is the most important thing that we all own aside from family and friends. And so if you take a minute to Google yourself, who are you? If you Google yourself and the top things that come up are not the traits and things that you want to be known as, why is that happening? If you Google yourself and you find nothing, why not? If you Google yourself and you constantly find yourself in the top 10 of every single search, and why are you even here tonight? Why are you not on your yacht or at your business or at your nonprofit really doing bigger things? If you Google yourself and someone with your own name is outranking you, what are you doing to outrank them? Now let me make something very clear when I talk about Googling yourself. This is not a popularity contest. What I'm talking about is truly making change. Not just talking the talk, but actually getting off your butt and doing something. I don't care the horizontal search tools that we use. It doesn't have to be Google. It can be YouTube, Flickr, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I don't care. People are not hiding on those channels, are you? So what have you done today? What are you going to do tonight? There's only two days on the calendar in which you can't do anything, and that's yesterday and tomorrow. If you could do tomorrow over again, would you? And yes, I said that question correctly. And I want to say it again. I really want you to think about this because this might be the most powerful question that I've ever posed in my entire life. And I'm, I'm, I still consider myself young. If you could live, if you could do tomorrow over again, would you? Now, my wife told me I had to explain this because I had to explain it to her. What I'm after here is that so many of us have our lives predetermined. Many of you know tomorrow when you wake up, from the minute you wake up to the time that you go to bed, you know everything that you're going to do. But you're not at the level of greatness. So what are you going to change to get to the level of greatness? Because you're not there. When you get to the level of greatness, people will know about you. Your stories will spread. People will flock to you, and they're going to want to join your campaign in whatever it is that you choose to do. The difference between average people and great people is very, very simple. Average people sit and they wait for someone or something to come to them to give them an opportunity. Great people go out and make it happen. You need to be proactive and not reactive. So let me bring this all back into context of the National Honor Society. Tonight there are 68 awesome kids here, students going to be recognized. And I've been blessed to have the opportunity to work with many of them. And there's some that I haven't. It's just the way life rolls at middle school. We work and we learn in a school district that's constantly pushing the envelope to try to find what's best and what's right for students. And that's the challenge that we have to continue to do. As I conducted some research in preparation for this speech, I came across a stat that said there's an estimated 1 million students involved in the National Honor Society across the nation and in some other countries, and I would assume that drops down to the junior high level as well. And that really, really stood out to me. 68 of you have good grades. So does a million other kids. 68 of you have good behavior. So do a million other kids. 68 of you have good values, good service, all those other positive words. But so do a million other students. So the question is posed, so what? What are you going to do to rise from the rest? How are you going to separate yourself from the pack? How is the chapter of Bent North National Honor Society going to collectively as a whole do something to rise above, not just the chapters locally or at the state level or at the national level, but beyond that. So when people talk Bettendorf National Honor Society, they know exactly who you are, what you represent, and the change that you're making. What is your impact? And that's what I want you to think about. To do nothing is easy. To be good takes some work, but to be great takes blood, sweat, and tears. And it's not an easy path, and sometimes it's not very enjoyable. And I want you to reach out to me. And don't just tell me, but show me and prove to me. 
And not just me, because I'm really not a big deal in the big scope of things, but to the world. The people need to hear your voice. Student voice is the most powerful element that we have. So what are you going to do with this platform of National Honor Society? That's what I ask. Or is this just another average resume builder, a large group of amazing students doing average really well? I don't think that's going to be the case. When it comes down to you and another person in a few years, when, it's, when you're looking for a job application or a college scholarship or college admission, and they're both looking at two resumes that are spectacular side by side, and they go and say, okay, we have to jump out a little bit to figure out who we're going to decide. Will your name stand out and say, this is a person we have to hire? Or will you be even a level ahead of that where they go, I don't even need to look because I already know this person. Or can even be to another level where they don't even care about a piece of paper that anybody can craft together and they're coming to you going, I need this person working for me or coming to my college. My challenge for you has already started. You're here right now ready on to take great recognition for the things that you've done. And it's a phenomenal recognition, something that I can't even claim that I had when I was in high school. And tomorrow continues this challenge. But change almost never fails because it's early. Change almost always fails because it's too late. As Dennis Rainey would state, doing nothing is like gravity. It just happens. You can be great, but you don't have to. If you want, you can choose to suck as a human being. But if you work hard to be allergic to average, and you work on your brand, and you continue to ask the question, so what? I promise you, you're not going to suck. And as I leave you with the wise words of wisdom from a famous old school rap group named Black Sheep back in the year 1991, the choice is yours. Thank you.